Well, hello and welcome to another day in Life with Sandy. Well, good morning. Today is Wednesday, April 5th. It's uh, going to be my perfect day, hopefully, but we have some birthdays today. Today is Susan Lynch's birthday. So, Susan, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Susan. Happy birthday to you. Cha-cha-cha. Well, I hope you have a great birthday, Susan. But it's also Brian, and Brian is Linda's husband, and the name of Linda's channel is Dayton's Grandma. So, Brian, it's your birthday, and Linda wanted me to sing to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Brian. Happy birthday to you. Cha-cha-cha. Well, I hope you have a great birthday, too. Um, like I said, it might be my perfect day today, although I hope it's not as bad as they're saying. Uh, we are under a tornado watch until uh, 4 p.m. this afternoon. And um, it's only, what, it's about noon right now. So uh, it might get dark, and I have to turn my lights on. <laughs> my perfect day, I'm telling you. I don't know why. I don't know. That would probably put someone in a depression. But not me. Not me. I love it. Loving every minute of it. But, um so far, it doesn't look like it's going to come to pass. We had some thunderstorms last night, which we weren't supposed to get thunderstorms last night, so I think it kind of moved through kind of quickly. But uh, the area I'm in, we kind of always be on the, the very edge of the storms. Uh, where uh, Danielle Nicole lives, she, uh, <clears throat> she gets the brunt of them all the time, whether it's the snow or the rain or the sleet or the tornadoes. It's, uh, in her particular area of the state, <clears throat> excuse me, her particular area of the state, she does get hit pretty hard. So, um, Danielle, I hope it doesn't hit you too hard. I really don't. And then where my sister-in-law lives, my sister-in-law lives in Belleville. And it must be like a really low-lying area because every storm that ever comes through Michigan always hits her. Always seems to hit her. So, um, oh, and she needs some prayers. She knows, God knows why. If you could say some prayers for my sister-in-law, Barb, I would really appreciate it. She's kind of desperate for prayers right now. So, uh, so really say some really good prayers. I wanted to thank Joan for letting me know that, uh, it's not a myth that, um, Easter and, or Lent ends, um, before Holy Thursday Mass. Um, I, um, still plan on waiting until Easter Sunday. I've done it my whole life. So that's just, I think my mother just wanted to keep us off the sugar that much longer because <laughs> she knew that on Easter Sunday we were going to go cray cray with all the sugar we were going to have. You know, as, as much as I remember not having a lot when I was growing up, I don't ever feel deprived when Christmas or Easter came along because we always had an Easter basket and we always had Christmas presents. So my mother, she knew what she was doing because uh, we might not have had gourmet meals, but we were never hungry. We were never hungry. So... And we were never deprived of anything. Anything we ever really wanted, we ever, we ever, we always got. Other than the one time I, t I told this story once before at Christmas time, I wanted to be a reindeer in the play, but um, I couldn't. Um, I told my mother I wanted to be the reindeer, and one of the things we had to buy was a pair of brown tights, and um, what was it? Something else. Well, we were we were making the antlers in art class. You know what? How many people remember when you used to go to school and you had an art class twice a week? You had a gym class every day. Uh, we had what we called auditorium, which was just basically like doing speeches, doing little plays, you know, like learning about the arts. Uh, we had a music class three times a week. Plus, we had the regulars. We had science. We had math. We had English. You know, we had all of that stuff. But anyway, so for the for the play, we were going to make the uh, uh, what do you call it? antlers, and um, and so I knew that as much as I wanted to be in the play, that my mother could not afford to buy me a pair of tights. So brown tights at that, because uh, you weren't, you know, it's that was kind of like a hard tight to match with the clothes that we had. So um, 
one of my teachers had heard me in the, talking to one of my friends saying, oh, I really want to do it, but you know, I don't think my mother can afford to buy me some tights. And when I came to school the next day, when I opened up my desk, because we had assigned seats and we had our own desks and that's where we kept our books, uh, there was a package of tights in the in my thing. And the teacher, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming, bought the tights for me. I really do, but... You know, there's always somebody out there. You know, teachers are just so underpaid and sometimes I think underappreciated. I would have thought that when everybody had to take care of their own kids during the pandemic and teach their own kids on Zoom and all of that, that they would have a better appreciation for how much work the teachers actually do and would have voted on some millage proposals to give them more money because it, it just doesn't seem... I don't know. It's just, it's just me. I don't think that an actor or an athlete should get paid as much as they're getting paid compared to um, the amount of effort they put into it. I mean, I realize that being a, uh, like a basketball or football or baseball star is a lot of work. You got to go to the gym. You got to do all this, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, like, and I, not all people get all the millions and millions and millions of dollars, but uh, it just doesn't seem, it just doesn't seem right. It just doesn't seem that if you can, pay your athletes that much why can't you pay your teachers that much i you know but anyway um i did get some mail yesterday after i closed out my well after i was later in the day my mail doesn't come till like four or five o'clock in the afternoon so but i did get an easter card but it came to my house and so i wanted to show you how pretty the easter card was see how pretty that is and it says easter a season of remembrance with god's love and amazing grace forever changed the world so Easter blessings, and then it said, Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Let them say among the nations, The Lord is King. That was Chronicles 1631. And this is what he promised us, eternal life. And that's John 2.25. May this blessed time fill you with peace and renewed faith. Love, Joan, Doug, Andrew, and Adam. Well, thank you so much. I, it's such a pretty, pretty card. It really, I really like that. Um, last night I went for confession and... As organized as, I told you that the, my biggest pet peeve in my church is when we go to communion, we have, I told you, I don't know how many, I told you before, but I forget, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different areas. Um, we have 3,500 par, uh, parishioners, I think, is, is it 3,500 families? 3,500 3, families in our parish. Um, but his way he wants you to go to communion is he starts at the very back of the church on the very last row and then he works his, has one person work their way up work their way up work their, so that even though there's two there's a priest and a deacon up in the front giving out the holy eucharist this is the way it goes and so it's it's a long process is my guess my my point and i don't see the point in it i can see that going to last chubby first i don't have a problem with that I don't have a problem with one pew going at a time. I don't have a problem with that. But I think that you could start from both ends of the church and work your way in. Um, but anyway, with that being said, when I went to confession last night, uh, we only have one priest and we have one deacon. No, we have two deacons. No, I think no, I think we only have one deacon now because the one just recently passed away. Yeah, we have one deacon and one priest. And so obviously the priest is the one that gives you absolution and, and here's your confession. Uh, our priest does not believe in um, the, used to be like the whole church, like you go and get absolution, like in a, like a service. Uh, he believes in individual confession, which I don't have a problem with. So, uh, but the problem I have is there's no organization on how to go into the confessional because when you sit when I, you know, like when I was a child, when you went to, when you went to confession, you had like the pews and then you'd line up, like you'd go in the pew and then the pew, the pew, and then you'd move over and then this pew would come back. And then, you know, like in a, like in a continuous motion, like a line, a regular queue, you know, like a regular queue. But, um, this, this prayer, our priest doesn't do that. And it's just, it's just willy nilly. And so it's like, People that come in, like, so the people that are closest to the confessional that go in, the people that are late coming in for the confession sit in those seats and then they go into the confessional before you. And I know, like, and I was getting so aggravated and I kept telling myself, Sandy, you're here to ask for forgiveness. Stop being so judgmental. And I just, I couldn't get over it. I just couldn't get over it. And I was just, I was getting madder and madder at these people that are just like strolling in, 
going to confession and strolling out while I was there. And uh, and then I got to thinking, you know, you're with God. What difference does it make how long you're going to be here? And as soon as I had that thought, then it didn't bother me anymore. It really didn't. Although I did confess when I went in, you know, how impatient I was at his system. But... Um, but it was like a long process, and I felt bad because other people that were coming in, and they were like, did, did you come in before me, or, or was I before you, or should you go first? Or sh it shouldn't be like that. It really shouldn't, and I don't know. And he was so long-winded with everybody. It was like he gave everybody a little mini sermon. <laughs> it's like, and I know, Sandy, you just went to confession last night and listened to you. Listen to you. But uh, I feel so much better when I go. I really do. And... Uh, and I just feel so lifted and I'm just looking forward to the rest of Holy Week because knowing that my soul is so pure, well, I don't know right now because it's just complaining. <laughs> I do think I have a good soul. I really do. I, I try my best and uh, I just, um, you know, it's just, it's just the way it is, I guess. That's just the way it goes. But uh, we're going to have uh, chicken for dinner. I'm going to have chicken and mashed potatoes. I'm debating on some stovetop. Um... Other than that, I don't have any plans. Looking forward to sitting in the dark with the light on, if that ever happens. I um, still um, tossing and turning about my cleaning service. You know, I got to thinking last year we paid $160 a month for somebody to come to cut the grass. So why am I so complaining about $180 to have somebody clean the house? Because I think, and that's kind of like a waste of money because it just means I'm being lazy. But I'm thinking maybe just once a month. And then I'll just do the other three weeks light cleaning. And then once a month, somebody can come in and do a deep clean. That's where I'm leaning towards. Because I think that one will only be like $100. And then I could I could do that. I don't mind cleaning up as I go. But I just, um, I don't know. I do so much laundry and everything else. It's just, anyway. So uh, let me show you what I had to eat today. Which is, I don't even know what I'm going to have for breakfast yet. I'm thinking on that. I know what I'm having for dinner. I'm just not sure about breakfast. And then um, I guess that's it. Tonight's my big night for Survivor. Jim and I watch Survivor, and then we watch all the Chicago's. Um, but that's it. Yeah, that's it. So if you're new to my channel, please subscribe, leave a comment, hit the like button, share if you think somebody might like to see it. Talk to you guys tomorrow. Well, you can't say that's not a colorful plate. A little heavy on the fruit, I realize, but... Oh, well. Today is Wednesday, April 5th. My quote is, always remember that you are always successful as long as you keep on trying. So for breakfast, I'm going to have a couple eggs, some berries, a banana, and a cup of tea, some Ezekiel toast, holy guacamole, and an ounce of cheese. Breakfast for today. Okay, for dinner, I'm going to have a piece of chicken, some mashed potatoes, a little bit of stovetop, broccoli, and a biscuit, and my iced tea.